गुरु ब्रह्मा गुरु विष्णु गुरु गुरु देवो महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्माय श्री गुरुवे नम अकंठ मंत्रलाकार व्याप्त चराचर तत्पद दर्शित तस्मय श्री गुरव नम सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरु परंपरा गुड मॉर्निंग so we are seeing the bajagovintam verses oh, okay okay you get the amt which is also called moha mudgaram moha mudgaram means that which pounds the delusions in us so we have seen the first two verses and also we jumped to the verses behind there are so many ways we can learn this grandam but i think i prefer to jump here and there so that we can bring the same concept together you know like uh, with the loving parents when you go home and uh, when you travel from abroad when you go home they will always tell you you know eat well sleep well and then when you are leaving the train station they will tell you when you sit on the train they will tell you annoyingly but out of love same way guru repeats many things in a different way in different verses but for the sake of our understanding together so i like to jump to different verses so if you have the text with you it will be very useful so what he is actually giving what he is giving is he is giving the knowledge or how to say that trigger to wake up and this trigger is applicable to all stages in life for us what is stages in life the spiritual progress if you say is a perfect pursuit for narajanma knowingly or unknowingly that will where we will lead into and what is the spiritual progress you know we normally talk about the spiritual progress how do we how do we know are we progressing or not what is the benchmark what is the evidence of it so this you can as bhagwan says it can make it into four five stages you know everybody your perspective how you see the world how you see yourself your perspective changes shows you a progression in spiritual path the very first one is everything else in the world is real there is no god god is unreal that's the first thought we start why because everything is real you see it you touch it feel it i can't see god so from the young age we all have this natural tendency that god is unreal the world is real everything is real this is necessary so it's a stage one if you say and then there is a stage it comes because the parents may be teaching you uh, devotions to god bringing god into the concept of life by giving stories of a uh, Uh, invisible god in some form in showing them in avatars showing evidences of things and we also start believing both out of fear and out of love or curiosity yes there is a god god is also real so the second stage is that where you see god is real the world is real the dichotomy is always there but we allocate some time for god Ten minutes prayer, and then rest of the time in the world, which is real. Again, this is a very natural progression. If you if you are in this progression, in this stage, we already progress because we believe in God. God comes to our life, and because we see God and the world are both real, and the God is somewhere intangible power. The world is giving me all the power of life. Naturally, we go towards this worldly life. 
then hits problems. Then you see what you believed going to be eternal with you is not eternal. So you start questioning this. Then the Acharyas comes and gives you and say, well, the world that you think is real doesn't have an independent existence. It is only a temporal existence, ephemeral. But for its existence, you need something else, like a create creation needs a creator. There is a God. So the, 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 the progression now is that instead of treating world is real, the God is real, you move from the God is real, the world is attaining reality in the presence of God, because of God. There's a temporal reality. See, now, if you are in this stage, you have progressed. Now what will happen, the life priority will change because intrinsically, we all believe in truth. We want to be in truth. We want to be in reality. Even though we are liars in the world, heart of heart, we want to be a true person. So therefore, when the God is real, the world is relatively real, ephemeral. The naturally, the priorities start moving towards looking for this God. Normally, we associate to the age. You know, as you grow older and experience comes in, your movement towards God is more intense. Now you are also looking for him. So if you are in this stage, that is progress. Then you are in a spiritual progress. Then the fourth stage comes in. Because you see that when you are looking for the God, then you naturally go to satsang, you go beyond your normal devotions, you ask questions, you seek. Then the response comes to you to the dramatic opposite. Oh, world is illusion, maya, mithya. All that they say because to really give you a detachment from this world to look for the bigger ones. Before you come to the fourth stage that only God, God alone is real. Everything else in Mithyatva, God alone is real. God alone exists. Now, when that happens, you are in a really an apex of the spiritual progress because what you do, therefore, you see everything as God. You become a very good person, lovely person. No enmity, no avarice, no greed, no jealous on anybody. You only see everybody is God in some form. Like you don't see the wave of the ocean. You don't see the form of the ocean, but it's the waterness of the ocean. You don't see the necklace or a bangle, you see the gold. But if you want to take one more step, if God alone is true, if God alone exists, then where am I? So that is the important question. So if you come to that fourth stage of God alone is real, God alone exists, then I exist, right? I must have a place. So I cannot be other than, nothing other than the God. Aham Brahmasma. That's why Bhagavan Ramana gave this mantra to start from your early life, even for the phase one. You see why? Because the only thing that you can prove existence is true without any proof is yourself. I have a wife. To prove that, I need to show the physical person. I have a house. I need to show you the evidence of the house. Every possession I have, I have to have gross evidence of it. The one that has no evidence needed. The whole world cannot believe. But I will still, still fight against it because I believe I exist. You can tell me you don't exist. But I'll say I exist. When God comes and tells me you don't exist, I'll say, no, God, I exist. Because... That is absolute knowledge, parokshanya, anubhuti. So that is the ultimate. So you can see 
The spiritual progress is inevitable. We take it there. Now, Baja Govindam is a wonderful grantham to push you to go in this path with little, little keys. How does the keys come through? So he says, first of all, why am I not knowing all this? Why am I not knowing all this? five stages of progression. You know it, but you have not given priority to that. Because of your different state, the world is real. So therefore, in this Grantham, when he is giving you this knowledge, he is going to be very, very severe in his language. He's going to really challenge you. And he's going to give you this not only to He's giving to this sishyas who are sannyasis, but he's also applies to all those people in the world. That's why we take the inferences applicable to our stage of progression. I keep repeating this because you'll see when you see the same verses coming in the same meaning, what's the point of you saying this? Because out of compassion, like, you know, eat four times, eat three times a day, have oil bath, all this motherly love, repeating the same thing, I'm going to say. So I'm going to jump between this. Some verses are delusion definition and delusion breaking. Some verses, therefore, give you some tools to remove the delusion. The tools are only two things. Vivekam and Vairagya. Do a vicharam, do enquire. With the, with the Viveka, with the knowledge, develop Vairagya. Vairagya means uh, giving up on things that are not important. To what? To the last stage of life. I should, I should say last stage. The, the eternal stage of life. The only stage of life. That Aham Brahmasma. Okay. So I'll jump around the text, so forgive me with that. Bajago bindam, bajago bindam, do bindam bajamota mate. Some proptes and nikite kale, Mahina hirakshadi, the krunkarane. Moda jahi hi, danaga matrishnam. Guru sat buddhi manasi trishnam. Yalla basse nijetar mo patam. Vitam te nabino da yachitam. We saw these two verses. And then we saw some supplementary verses to support this. I have a very quick recap and then we move to the next one. The first one was he's starting with the delusion of duty ignorance. It's a delusion here when I see, use the word delusion. Don't take the delusion in a, in a colloquial way where we say somebody's intoxicated with, the, with, with alcohol, he deluded. That, that's a very gross level delusion. But here we are talking about delusion that you do not accept as a delusion, but think as a knowledge. You may have a PhD, you may have a top, top notch scholar in the field of your expertise, but if you do not know your Atma Vidya, you are deluded. So we are talking delusion means here that which is taking you away from yourself. So all the knowledge, the Krunkarane. He, he chose the Vyakarnam study as an example because Vyakarnam stays in the, in the right middle of boldly knowledge on the Admati knowledge. Vyakarnam is needed to understand Vedas. Vyakarnam is the construct of the language. Language is the source of communication. Communication is the essence of life. So he, he chose that and say all your scholarly pursuits which are very much important to the first stages of progression is not going to help you in a delusion. Which delusion he took it? He took the ultimate delusion, which nobody can deny, is death. Because for us, death is a fact. Death means everybody has to die. All men are mortal. So for it is not uh, challengeable by anybody. But the one says, that's a delusion. Veda says that's a delusion. Because if you think you're going to die, you're deluded. Imagine this. In all this way, in a, in a way, 
moral sciences tell you, even here in the subsequent verses, we are going to see how death is the uh, Sharanam final resort. But death is not real for the reality, because the reality, you never die. So therefore, if I am thinking that I'm going to die and I'm afraid of it, that's the biggest delusion. Therefore, he is taking the hammer and hitting very hard. The delusion that you have that I will die is not going to be helped by the scholarly studies of all these things or even doing things. But what do you have to do? You do Pachakovindam. That Japam actually means seek Govindam. And we saw what is Govindam means, that which is your Andaratma. So unless you seek your Atma, unless you attain that realization, nothing is going to help you. Then we saw Kamam Krodam Lobam Mogam Yatvatmanam Pashyadi Sogam Atma Jnana Navihina Muda Te Pachyante Naraka Niguda 27th verse, we took it because it has got some relative context. Here again, he is talking about Atma Jnana Vihina Muda. So he defines here, the Muda is one who doesn't have Atma Jnana. Therefore, all the sciences that does not give you Atma Jnana is Avidya. So Avidya is not, not knowing. Avidya is not knowing the true self. Avidya is needed, therefore. Ambar is called Vidya, Vidya Rupini. We need a vidya to understand dharma and everything that leads to vidya. But this is deluded by kama, krodha, lopa, moha. So what you have to do, therefore, if you are not careful about this and give up all this uh, vices to look for the true, true nature of yourself, pachyante, you will be tormented, cooked in naraka. Niguda means yeah, prison, imprisonment, enveloping it. Pachyanti. Okay, this is not a, <laughs> Naragam is not a place somewhere above the sky or below the earth or something. That's not a, this is a mind. Your mind will be tormented. You'll never be happy. You're always worried about these things without realizing the true self. You suffer. Why do you want to suffer? Why you want to suffer here and then go to look for some Vaigundam's heaven? So the, oh, you have to live wherever you live, you need to live happily. But there is, there is a way to do it. The way to do that is to Pachagovindam, Pachagovindam. Seek the true self. So we saw these two verses first. The Muda Jahihi, the Nagama Krishna, Kurushat Bhutti, Manasi Krishna. Here he saw, he went to the next one. Having given the delusion of ignorance, he now moved on to, or ignorant what happened? You think the world is real, therefore you go after acquiring the wealth. So, Dhanagama Trishnam. Trishnam, you just look for it. You're earning all the time how to make money. Now, you may be retired 80 years ago, still looking at the stock market. I go, it's going there, coming down. And, So this is not good. This Trishnam has to go away. Kurusat Buddhi. So do this in, in your mind, have give up all this attachment. But then the question came in: so should I not therefore touch money? Should not I have money? But you need it. But Allah Basi Nija Karma Upat. Nija karma upat. Whatever you have to do, you do, and whatever money you get. You use it for your life. Prarabdha may give you something. Have it. Because as, as a family dwellers, as you're going from stage one to stage five, you need to live in this world. So earn money in a, in a legal way, but don't have the, trish, the trishna on it. Don't have attachment to it. Then we saw another verse, number 30. Artham anartham bhavaya nityam nasti tadasukalesha satyam 
ಪುತ್ರಾಧನ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಷನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅ ವಿಚಾರ ಸಿ ವಿ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಡೂ ವಿ ವಿ ವಾಂಟ್ ಮನಿ ವಿ ವಾಂಟ್ ಅ ನೈಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ನರ್ ಹಸ್ಬೆಂಡ್ ಅವರ್ ಅ ವೈಫ್ ದೆನ್ ವಿ ವಾಂಟ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲ್ ವಿ ವಾಂಟ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ we are going to see some more verses which are going to question the true nature of all this relationship later but here the artham is anartham whatever the wealth that you think is going to rescue you is not going to rescue you satyam in truth tadah sukhaleshaka nasti there is not it's a, not even a small happiness is not there in this it look like happiness when you have money when you have excess luxury but it is actually going to lead you into the trouble and then he took a, a illustration of dhana dhana bhajam that means one who is possessed with a lot of wealth for him or for her putra tapi because of the children as well be it he fear you know you have lots of money assuming that the money is you know coming out so many different evil ways the, the son will be looking forward to take the money from the father he is waiting for it because his mind is also corrupted when is the old man going to kick the bucket or should i finish him off so as as a old person you have tabam fear so we saw that so the four the material illusion the idea is that you live with your means be contented the adi sarvatra varjaya anything that is more than excess avoid excess that's what the maha mantras of vedas avoid excess balance life so we saw that now we go to the third one so dharmartha kama dharma visa artha visa and we need to know the kama ನಾರೀಸ್ಥನ ಭರನಾಸಿ ವಿಚಿಂತಯ ವಾರಂ ವಾರಂ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ಎಂ ಎಸ್ ಸ್ಯಾಂಗ್ ಶಿ ಡಿ ನಾಟ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಸ್ here this here now talking about the kamam kamam is the desire of that in the world it desires that which takes one's mind to the extreme ecstasy is the physical relationship with the opposite sex so here he is going to talk about that that is also a delusion and of course he has taken an example of the lust of a man over the women's body okay so don't, don't get offended because how he talks about women and of course if it is a, probably a you know a, a, a woman quite would have written the other way doesn't matter it is forget about that what he is saying here is nari sthanavara nabhi desham drishtva if it is the first line by drishtva by having looking at uh, the women's uh, bosoms and the and the and the and the hip areas by somebody getting moga avesham avesham means uncontrollable dwelling desire that's a that's just a delusion maga ma aga aga is a beautiful word seldom used maga means don't get involved don't get dropped don't get entrapped into this moha aavesham now it is not to diminish women who do anything like that in fact uh, bhagavan shankara is is complete in in in, in all his knowledge in his all his approach um in fact in um, 
in when in the ubaya bharati when, when you're challenging the debate it's called a kusma sastram in the the love making of between a husband and a wife that question he could not answer he took a the only defeat he took against saraswati is that and then he goes in this uh, life as a detached witness he also understand the knowledge and he won back and and things like that the conjugality is necessary for family life conjugal relationship is an important for family life you see there is a wonderful slogan aagara nitra bhayamaitunam cha samanyam yed bashubhir narana like you know food eating food uh, sleeping fear because of security maituna means procreation and uh, creating lineage this is all natural instinct you 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 have to see when you what's called a uh, swabhavika icha one doesn't need to be guilt about it in all the living beings the opposite sex have got an attraction for a carnal conjugality but for the animals it's the instinct is only for breeding you know it's sometime you know when when, when the, the the male leopard comes to uh, mate with the female leopard it kills its children fight it is not enjoyable thing they do but it is a natural instinct for them and they have to go through it to breed and that is how god has programmed them but for us dharmo ki desham atiko visheshaka dharmena hinaka pashubit samana if you also like that like like the animals we take the opposite sex as purely for object of physical enjoyment sensual pleasures we are not different from the animals before in the first two lines is common to everybody grahasthashramam for a very legitimate relationship between husband and wife this physical attraction is needed the physical relationship is needed but again he is warning you don't go maga moha desha you know a lot of story we know how they have got into this slavery of physical relationship we saw that uh, dulsidas life you remember he could not resist not seeing his wife he crosses the river and goes and sees his wife the wife has just come to see her brother's house and, and she says are you mad you talk about all this sat vishaya just for this body you come all the way taking it so you see the balance everything has to be balanced this relationship between a man and a woman in a married life is so pious so here he says don't go because if you go adesh a minute you forget you get deluded you go down the steps the other way that you can reduce this control it or for other grahasthas other ashramas brahmachari sanyasi for them this is prohibited so he says for them manasi vichintaya varam 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 repeated repeatedly 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 in manasi in, in your mind think about it think about what think about this that you are looking for pleasure etan this one mamsa vasadi vikaram mamsa means the flesh vasa uh, vasa means um the fat adi so bones fresh so this this is basically uh, what you're looking at an attraction is is a collection of flesh and bone and majja and rasa you know beauty is skin deep you remove the skin everybody is the same so this extreme inquiry you must have in your mind think about it all the time this is more important for those who have no legitimacy of having conjugal relationship in a married life but everybody else or even a married man going beyond their uh, life wondering about the other women or same way the women wondering about other men this adharmic relationship is not possible but if this is coming as a swabhaviga see 
this desire's existence, you don't need to feel guilt about it. But they can take control of it, making it, perishing it, make, burying it, is something that you should take up because otherwise you will be deluded. So that's what this Loga says. There is another one I take from 29, same way. Sukataha ha kriyate rama bhogaha paschatanta sharire yo rogaha yatya biloke maranam sharanam tadapinan munchati papa sharanam. So he is saying, Sukataha kriyate. So just for the happiness, Rama Bhogha. Rama means, uh, because Rama, Rama, Rama Chandramurti, that's one meaning. Rama also means cardinal pleasures, sensual pleasures. Rama Bhogha means sensual pleasures. That gives you happiness to your physical senses. So if, so if, if the whole life is spent on this sensual pleasures in excess, Paschitdanta, thereafter, Hanta, Hanta is a Sanskrit word for alas, oh my God, Paschitdanta. So thereafter, alas, what happened? Sarire rogaha, body will get rogam, disease. You know, you know the story of Arunagiri Nada. So the physical relationship, which is Mohavesham you have, you leave the norms of life, law, morality. Even you can take this to any sensual pleasures. Forget about just the physical sexual pleasures, even the sensual pleasures. Too much of sweet, too much of ice creams, too much of anything. What happened? Sarire rogha. So this, this is coming through. Yadhyapi loke maranam sharanam. Yadhyapi. Yadhyapi, even though the loke in this world, maranam sharanam. So the maranam, the death is the final result, resort. Death, I mean, everything ends in the death. Even though that is known. Even though we all know that death is going to come. Tatepina. Uchati papa Papacharana means that which is going to put you in the sin, the deluded activity that you are doing. Na munchati. It is not going. In other words, what he's saying is we all know that death is going to come. We all know this is going to give you the physical problems. But we will not give up. See, the fasting they say. You, you, you have fasting and they engage do Ekadashi Pradham. Why is that? Is God interested in you not eating? It's not there. That's the point. It's all, it's not for God. If you think that I'm doing Ekadashi Pradham for God's sake, forget it. God is not interested in you. The world is not interested in you. Nobody is interested in you. It's only you that you have to take care of yourself. So therefore what the great scholars have done, you prepare your life. Because when you grow older, your body will lose the ability to see the sarira balam, um, indriya balam, and manobalam. There are three important balams you have. The sarira balam will decay, and the indriya balam will decay. The manobalam, if you don't maintain, it will go away. So, manobalam you can maintain. The sarira balam will go away. I cannot eat. Uh, you know, uh, you, maybe a muruku or something like that, which is the hard to eat and my teeth is gone. But if I am, you know, devotee of Moga Veshaman eating muruku, for example, when my teeth are gone and somebody is eating that bakshinam, and my tabam will come. Because the desire has not gone. My body is gone. Desire has not gone. It is there. So, so what is the point of being in a state where you have 
intense desire to do, but you have no capacity to do this. It is not that you don't have the thing to eat, everything is there. That you want to enjoy, the object is there, but you cannot enjoy because your body is not able to do it. Now imagine if you have the desire at the time, what a torture. That's what happening to when we are aging, when you are getting older, unless we have this practice, this discipline of giving up things, the young age, we will not do. Because more you will find, the giving up is increases more your pleasure of joy, joy of life. The more you give up, more joy comes to you because you are free. You are free. Not that we know, I don't eat this because I'm diabetic. I love to eat it, I'm diabetic. Tabam. And you find a way of oh, diabetic sugar, or oh, I can still eat. So you find a way to invent some means to hang on to the Icha. That is the power of Icha, delusion. I think it's a, in Bhagavan says in a Gita, um, something like that comes through. In the, in the mirror, like a dust. For some, the, the desires are like mirror, like a dust. You just uh, wipe it clean, it becomes clear. For some, it is like uh, smoke in a fire. You know, when the, the fire comes in, there's also a smoke there. The smoke will come, wherever there's a fire, there's a smoke. The smoke will hide the fire. For some, it is like a garbam, like a fetus in the womb. See, the fetus in the womb is very, you know, it cannot get out of this womb until the time comes in. So there are some of us who's got desire so much covering ourselves, we can't get out of it. Some of us has got desires like a dirt or a mirror. We just look for somebody to clean it up. We can shine. So the first one, you have no, nobody can help. You have to wait for 10 months or whatever the time it takes. So let them go. Let them enjoy life, find difficulty and come back. Like us who are with the, with the dust on the mirror, the mirror cannot clean itself. We need somebody. We need the rainwater of the Guru's words have to come or the tender hands of the Guru have to come to clean up. That's why you go to satsang, so that our dirt can just clean out. And there are those who are like fire with the Atma Jnana, but they also have the desire like a smoke. This is Bhagavan's words. So what, what, what do they do? They have maintained nishta. When the fire is blown up, the smoke goes away. See, therefore, the desire is so powerful, even to the Atma Jnani, it comes there and envelops as a smoke. So therefore, we don't need to feel guilty about our desires, especially the Swabhaviga desires, which are coming naturally in us. But you must take control of those desires so that I can ask the question. To, to take the control, you therefore ask very difficult questions. Is it a Yajni Valkya is a great um, saint, comes in the Bhagavad Upanishad. So he has, he has got two wives. So, so he had a here is good time. Gadhyayani, Maitri, enjoy the life. Tapas. Then he has no Mohavesh. He realized that he's elevating himself. He said, Look, I have given up everything. I'm going. So, whatever the position that he has acquired, he splits into two halves, one to Maitreyi, one to Gadhyayani. Gadhyayani is uh, just accepts and then she leads a life. My three is very curious. I said, you are leaving all this to me and, uh, and you are going somewhere. So therefore you are going somewhere which is far better than this. Otherwise you would not go, right? You're going somewhere. And you're saying you're going to Amrit, that which is deathless. You attain deathlessness. 
tell me, dear husband, the whatever that you're leaving behind, is any of these things going to help me to attain that? I said, no way. It won't, it won't give you this. Then he says, then why are you giving this? Give me that that you have that you're going to search for. Then he calls my three, okay, sit down and uh, it goes on like this. But important point I want to make, that, that he says, Nava re patyu kamaya patihi priyo bhavati. Atmanastu kamaya pati priyo bhavati. So he goes on like this. Nava re jhayaya priya bhavati. Putra priya bhavati. So what he's saying is, when you, when 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 a husband loves the wife, he is not loving because his wife sake. He is loving her because of his own atma shanti. He is actually loving himself. The expression of his love comes on his wife. Same way, navare jaya kamaya jaya bhavati. Wife also loves the husband, also loves the wife like this. Wife also loves the husband like this. You love the putra, your children you love, not because they are they are children, it's because you have love in you, your atma issue. Everything is because of your atma. This is very easily can be proven. Time can prove you. Now, why am I not loving the next node diaper? I love my child, my wife, my the mamakaram is there. The Mamgaram Mai is again away from you. When we go closer and closer, look at it, it is I. I am not disrespecting love in the family, but what I am saying is the Tatpuriyam there is even that love between two people is only an expression of love for oneself. You can call it selfish love, but it doesn't matter. It is, it is the true nature of that. So, Arke Vilya tell Maitri, this is the truth of it. We express it because we are in the stage of life two, stage two, everything is real. We love everything out there and whatever comes closest to it, we, love, we take it as a possession. We love it more. But if you really look at it, the relationship, the love is only because it is love inside you. So that in which, that which gives you that love, that which is the place of love, that which the expression of all your behaviors is Atma. So if you keep looking at the Atma and love it, what will happen is the love that you had before is only going to multiply in infinite time. You're going to love your wife more, you love your, the world more, because now the love becomes absolutely pure because you don't see your partner or a children or a friend, you see yourself and everybody else. So that is a that is a thought pariyam. But here it is a medicine gift. Therefore, you're saying this 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 desire is just going to take you forever. So therefore, we, we just saw three things: delusion due to ignorance, delusion due to material wealth delusion due to desires, desires especially of sensual pleasures. But this, this desires and the sensual pleasures, they are very difficult to, they don't have an end, as, as Bhagavan said in the Gita. So there is one verse here. Dinaya minyau sayam pradaka shira shira vasantav this is another uh, interesting verse. Here Bhagavan saying, this desire that is holding you, wrapping you, either as a smoke or a dirt or as it's a womb, umbilical card, is lasting. How? Dina Yamin Yao. 
is a Bhagavachana. Dina means day. Yamin means night. Yamam night means night. Day and night. The first line, day and night. Sayam Prataka. Sayam means the evening. Prataka means the morning. So day and night, morning and evening. Sushira Vasantha. Sushira means the winter, winter time. Vasantha is spring, like that, fall seasons. Then what happened? Puna Ayata. Again and again, this comes. What comes? The time comes, the day comes, night comes. This keep on coming. All this is what? Kalak Kridati. Kriyadi means sport. The time is playing like this. And then what happens? Gachat Ayuhu. Gachat Ayuhu. This life is also goes like this. In other words, the, the very good morning, we say good morning is basically one day is gone in our life. Every day takes away our life. Please remember, this is Mudgaram, it's going to hammer you. So don't take this as very disappointing or distressing you. It is it is just to wake you up. If every day is going just like that and without me knowing, it takes away my life. Why am I in the bed until 10 o'clock in the morning? Why am I watching something which is rubbish until 2 a.m. and then sleep the next day? I just squander my life. Because this is a very precious life. This, the days are very important. The three Upanishads just keeps on talking about it. Everything is I have given you. I have given you stars, skies, waterfalls, mountains, flowers, birds. For you to enjoy. Go out and enjoy. But we do that. We, we know this. Even so, Tadapi, so. Na Munchet. We are not letting it go. What do we let it go? Yasa Vayu. Asha. Uchati. Asha. Asha means desires. Vayu. The desires is like a wind. Here you're comparing it as a wind. So the, the wind of the air of desires is not going away. It almost becomes a prana. Everything when you say so hum, we don't do that. Asha, Asha, we always Asha. I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this. So, I, I took this verse now because it is very meaningful context-wise. So, the Ichas is very difficult to do and to give up the Icha is very necessary things to do. Some desires we need to engage but not lose ourselves. To, to get out of those desires, we create inquiries about this. Even to the extreme of saying, this body is just a flesh, I don't need this. Or this sweet is just, you see, the food that we eat, annam, annam, you know, we say, we say, food eats, but the annam, the Sanskrit word, the root of that is called and. And, and is a root for which the word annam comes in. And also means, that which eats you. That which eats you. So you eat first. That your Upanishad comes. Adhyade idicha bhutani. So all this physical bhutas are food. You eat, they eat you. When you eat something, the food that you eat, is eaten by you, but then the food starts eating you. This you cannot escape. So more you put the food done, more they have dominance in eating you. They, 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 they eat you psychologically, you become addicted to it, but physiologically also they eat, it's not eating you. Therefore, you need what you therefore should they not therefore eat? Eat, but control. Everything is balanced. But you do that with a kind of urgency as if there is no tomorrow. Just for imagining, just say, I'm just going to be there for one day. 
tomorrow I'm not here, this world. What you do? We have no idea what to do, right? Because you are not planned. Well, that can never happen, we think. That can never happen. No, it will happen. Nobody is Saswatam. We don't want that power. If, if you want the power, if you want the power to know, you know people say, why, why nobody can predict that? Why am I not able to predict that? If you do that, you can't handle it. Therefore, what you can do, either you can just squander your life and then take the next course and then do that, or I plan my life. I, it may come anytime. Come you may, because I'm not afraid, because I am deathless. The body will decay, body will go, but I am going to give the body back to you as immaculate as possible. That means I, I would try to do within my best ability. Nijakarmatam. Praraptam may take my body to decay. I may have diseases. But in my effort, I will not create diseases because this body doesn't belong to me. It belongs to somebody else who gave me as a resting place for this Janma. Therefore, I would take care. I will, I will nourish it. I will worship it. Dekam Devalayam. So if, if you're renting a house, you don't nail it everywhere, you don't paint it because your deposit will be gone. So you take care of as if it is you, your house. So body is your house. So you do that. So I'm, I'm digressing, but what I'm saying is all this is what Bhagavan is trying to tell you. This desire is holding on to you. You have knowledge about this, that it is, it is futile. You know that death is coming, time is moving, but still you're not able to give up the desire. Therefore, you got to do something. What I'm going to do, therefore, is I'm going to take this hammer and hit you. This is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. You feel hurt, be hurt. But then you think about it. And then you, one more, I, I finish it. Ankam galitam palitam mundam dashana vihinam jatam tundam Riddhoyati Bekita Dandam Tatepina Munchet Yasha Pindam. Again, here also he is making it a little bit stronger. What happens is that Angam Galita. Galita means decayed, weakened. Angam is weak. Your body gets weakened. And no matter, no matter who you are, the body gets weakened. Palitam Mundam. Palitam. Palitam means it's become ripen. Munda means the head, the face. Dasana vihina. Vihina. It is gone. Dasana vihina. It is gone. All his teeth have gone. Basically, you, you got a face without the teeth. Uh, jatam tunda. Tunda means the mouth. Jatam is completely dry. So you, you become old, your body becomes weak, your teeth are gone. The Vridha, the, the, the old man, the old person. Yati, Yati, Ghritva Danda. So he is Danda, he is stuck holding, he cannot walk. Ghritva means getting hold of. He's getting hold of what? Danda. He has a, he has a stick now. So he is dramatizing, he's saying, look, when the old age comes, body becomes weak, teeth are gone, gray hair, eyes cannot see, ears cannot hear. You know, you, you so you have to hold a stick. Even then, tatapi, even so, na munchet, not giving up. Munchet means giving away, let go. Na munchet, not giving away. Asha pindam, asha pindam. Muncheti asha pindam. Ashana, desire, pinta means this body. It's again restating the same thing. That's the reason why for this verse. You give up all the desires, even though, okay, I don't want to, I don't want money, I don't want this thing, I don't want to watch the sky television anymore. I do this, uh, I do good things. But then you still have desire on your body. So when you have desire on your body, you get depression 
because I'm not able to stand up. My smiling face is gone. My, have, my cheeks have gone, fallen down. My teeth are gone down. You, your mind, in your mind, you still think you are young and you think that you are the body. Therefore, when, you, when I present my body this way, it is very distressing. But this is because the attachment to the body, the desire to the body. The moment the desire is gone, the body glows. You know, you can see some, sometimes you see some old people, you feel like doing namaskarams to them because they don't have any makeup, but you look at them, you, you, you say it's a glow there. The glow doesn't come from the physical body. It comes from the freedom that have in the mind, the detachment from the mind. See, when something is dirty, you're attached to it, you look dirty. When it's dirty and you're away from this, the more away you are, more pure you are. And you can be aware that your body is in a way decaying, your, your polluted mind is corroding, and I am not that body, I'm not that mind. So when I am moving away from this, then I look natural myself, that means I look pure. Now that detachment is what Bhagavan is hinting here. So please note, he's saying, Ankam Dalitam, Kalitam Mundam, Tasina Vihinam, Chadam Tundam. So all this is going to happen. So Tadabina Munchatya has happened. So don't do that. Give up. So what do I do? Okay, I, what do I do? Pacha go vindam, pacha go vindam, go vindam, pacha monamadi. So recite the name of Govinda, pray to the God, seek God, seek Atma. So we'll finish with that. Um, Sidoma said Gamayam. Sidoma said Gamayam. Masoma Jotir Gamayam. Masoma Jotir Gamayam. Tioma Amadam Gamayam. Om Shanti 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 Him. Om Shanti 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 Thank you, Raja. Thank you. Thank you, Raja. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.